Él viene volando el tipo de vuelo que estamos mostrándoles nosotros que hacemos acá en Patagonia, en Bush Pilot, hace mucho tiempo. Él y sus hijos compitieron en, en el Stoll de Valdés, que es un poco el lugar donde nosotros agarramos la idea para hacer lo que es hoy el Trevel Inflaín. Eh, y bueno, para los que están viendo en streaming, acá en Argentina son ahora las 6 menos 20 y en Alaska son las 12 menos 20 de, de la mañana. Vos me decías que para él es un honor estar acá, que lo hayamos recibido y que le demos este espacio para que él les cuente un poco de lo que es su vida aeronáutica. Y bueno, les va a mostrar un montón de lugares donde con, las, con los skills, como se le dice en inglés, necesarios, se puede disfrutar la aviación de una forma completamente distinta de lo que la mayoría estamos acostumbrados, ¿no? Entonces, Bob, I will translate. I have no idea what you said, but I'll go with it. Uh, uh, I, I, I think that what I heard the last part of what you said was that the skills in a stole competition are the same disciplines to go land on the mountain out there, and that these pictures are about those places, right? Okay. Is that correct? Perfect. Bob, lo que, lo que dice Bob es que las, las habilidades en una competencia de stall son las mismas que necesitaríamos para poder ir a trabajar en la cumbre de una montaña o en un lugar que no es un aeropuerto, básicamente. And I've enjoyed the competitions, but I'm going to show first about the pictures of about there. Maybe you already said that. I don't know. No, la, la competencia se disfruta mucho, pero se disfruta de otra manera el poder eh, volar de esta manera, viendo la aviación con la naturaleza de esta manera. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to go through these quick, and uh, I've got quite a few of them, and I'm just going to go through them and just, um, this is super light snow. You see where you put the skis on the airplane, and uh, this snow is only a day old, and you can see the plane sinking into it here. I'm just going to run through. That's Denali. Um, this is another place in Denali Park. This is my son, Bobby. Um, here he is again. And um, this is a glacier that has, uh, the sun has melted away the ice, and the, it's dried away and made these little points. It's kind of cool. Es un so, glaciar que el sol derritió y fue formando esas formas que ustedes ven ahí. So, yeah, so I'm just going to go through and show a lot of different pictures. First of Alaska and, and then we'll go beyond a bit. Um, this is the beach in front of my, where I have a cabin. Um, a stop for lunch. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm in the glare. I'm going to move out a little bit. No, no, I'm blocking you. Um, it'll work. So, seeing some whales from above. On the glacier, so we do a fair amount of glacier flying on wheels in the summertime after the snow is melted off. Um, we try to land as close as possible to where the snow just left because eventually it melts deep grooves in the water running down, melts deep grooves. Can okay, you say lo que Bob está diciendo es que esto, esto es un aterrizaje en un glaciar en verano y tratan de aterrizarlo más cerca a donde la nieve se empieza a derretir porque cuanto más lejos se socava más ese hielo y se pone más difícil el aterrizaje. The ice is never level, so we, before we leave the airplane we always attach it to the ice with ice screws that climbers use. Bien, el, el hielo nunca está nivelado, entonces antes de dejar el avión lo atan al piso. And that's another plane we had, uh, we built, I still have this plane for a competition, and the wind was blowing, that's how we got on there. Ese es otro avión que tienen para las competencias, es un gravel bar super chiquitito, y porque estaba, porque había viento lo pudieron aterrizar básicamente en ese lugar. This is the same airplane in my son. Just build it out of parts. Ok, as a part. Yeah. Lo construyó de partes, no es un avión, es un experimental que construyeron de partes. Sí. So the shocks. Los amortiguadores, el recorrido que tienen los amortiguadores, ahí se puede ver que son gigantes. Um, this is one of my favorite places um, up on the glacier, and I've always wanted to land on that snow on the top, but it's never been level enough. Siempre quiso aterrizar en la parte de arriba que ven, pero nunca estuvo lo suficientemente nivelado para poder hacerlo, que es uno de los, sus lugares favoritos. Oh, this is the Bahamas. <laughs> de Alaska, Bahamas. <laughs> Pasamos. No, it, it's the Bahamas. The Bahamas, yeah. yeah. And the water is good. The water is warm. 
So in the winter time, I always travel away from Alaska. I've never spent the whole winter there. Um, so this is on a coast. This is um, an hour from my house in Alaska on the coast. It's a waterfall. Él no pasa todo el invierno en Alaska. Viaja mucho y esto está a una hora de su casa en Alaska. And this is uh, also another place on the water. That's a thousand feet above the ocean. That's a thousand. Eso está mil pies sobre el océano, ese lugar. That's the same cliff. Waterfalls, waterfalls. We have a place to land on a shelf This right side. there. In the flat part. But Tienen un lugar para aterrizar acá, en esa zona de ahí. Right there, yeah. And it's not always intense. Sometimes it's very gentle. It's just, <laughs> just go, take, take a good time. A veces es tranquilo y uno puede tirarse a, a relajar, así como vean en la foto. Yeah. Van a ver cómo se cae el, el hielo, como vemos acá en el Perito Moreno. Bueno, ahí van a ver lo mismo. This is my house. This is, uh, this is, I call it base camp because I launch from there all the time. Esa es su casa y la, la llama campamento base porque sale siempre de ahí a, a ir a recorrer otros lugares. Oh, my daughter likes to kayak. So I find places on the coast with these arches and I figure out how to fly a kayak there and then she'll kayak through them and back to the beach and I'll fly her back home. A la hija le gusta hacer kayak, entonces encuentra lugares y aprendió cómo llevar un kayak con el avión, entonces bajan en la playa, kayakean y vuelven con el avión y el kayak a su campamento base. There's a hot spring there. Okay, the plume, the smoke, this is from... Mi casa, my house is here, and this is the first day before a TFR, maybe the second day. But Un incendio was... como el que estamos teniendo ahora, esa es la vista desde su casa de, del primer día de un incendio de ese, de ese calibre. This is mi casa, and the hangar, and my airstrip, and I'm the first property from the national park, the wildlife refuge, and I actually, the day before, paid people to take the wood off my house, And we put concrete on the house. Concrete. For the wood, for the fire. Yeah, to protect for the fire. La gente le, le sugirió que saque la madera de su casa y que ponga concreto porque ese, ese incendio podía venir. Su casa es la primera pegada al Parque Nacional, entonces si esto crecía, ahí la, se ve que la dirección del viento va para allá, pero si rotaría el viento y el fuego se viene encima, le dijeron que saque la madera y ponga concreto para que no se le queme la casa. And this fire was 50 miles by 20 miles before they stopped it, 3 kilometers from my house. Quemó 50 miles, 50 millas por 40. By 20, yeah. Por 20. Uh, and They stopped it 3 kilometers from my house. Lo pararon 3 kilómetros antes de su casa, ese, ese fuego. Quemó mucho. This is just the first day before they stopped private flying around there. Fue el, el primer día antes de, before? Yeah, before the fire was too big. Okay. There was no... No way to come. There was no rule okay. to not fly, but after that, it was all helicopters and just that. So they closed the airspace. Okay. Este fue el primer día. Después se cerró el espacio aéreo y ya no se podía volar más por el tamaño del fuego y había mucha gente combatiendo ese incendio. So when I saw the smoke out here, I was shaking. I'm like, whoa! But it's over there. So, <laughs> uh, so the glaciers is are a lot of fun. They're a science by themselves. Um, And it's very committed because they're often so steep that you can't go around. When you finally decide you're going to land, it's a no-go around because there's mountains all around and the glaciers climbing. So you have to study the surface and miss any holes, you know, and then make a a very a steep planned descent right to a spot and and you're done. Just Tiene, like, tienen pendientes son lugares que no hay escape, o sea que hay que pasar muchas veces mirando que no haya ningún agujero y una vez que se decidió ir al piso ir con seguridad evitando justamente una grieta o algún lugar donde el, el avión se pueda dar vuelta y el, el, el descenso es empinado y lo más suave posible. But sometimes it's just about picking blueberries. 
<laughs> or finding waterfalls. Oh, more ice. In the fall, this is in September for us. This Esto es septiembre, fall. otoño para ellos. Oh, this island, a friend of mine found, and he says, we have to go back if we can land it when the tide is out, because it's a crazy looking island, right? Yeah. And es, un amigo de él encontró esta isla y le dijo que tenía que volver porque había que aterrizar porque tiene una forma muy particular. And you land there? Yeah, so we landed it. Y yes, aterrizaron that's, ahí. That's the island. We landed on the end close on to that you. beach. Yeah. And, um, oh, this is uh, Nova Scotia. This was another... These are in order of date, so they jump around based on where I was. No están en orden las fotos, así que van saltando de un lugar a, a otro. No están cronológicamente alineadas. This is Nova Scotia, Canada. We're back in Alaska. So this is a place I took uh, my daughter, and we landed on that shoulder right there. And then we walked up where we are, and then that's her looking over the mountain to the next valley, looking nice. over. This is my daughter Brittany. And, uh, esa es su hija Brittany, aterrizaron up. donde se ve el cab y caminaron y tenían esa vista que vieron en la foto anterior hacia el otro valle. So a day for me typically is to get a, take a lunch, and we always have like 10 days of food in the plane and camping gear. We have everything we need to stay out there if the weather changes or if we just get tired and want to stay. But this way we just go for an afternoon hike for two or three hours and have a good So lunch. you have all the time uh, an equipment for 10 days, you said? Mm -hmm. Él tiene un equipo en el avión para sobrevivir 10 días si él cambia el tiempo y se tiene que quedar en la montaña. Siempre lleva justamente eso, para su, es, sí, sería su equipo de supervivencia. Yep. So again, a trip with my daughter. Just different places we landed that day. Son lugares diferentes que aterrizaron ese día con su one, hija. We took the peril. We took the dog. Llevaron el perro con ellos. Um, this was a glacier. This was a pretty dramatic spot. Um, none of the ice without rock. All of this ice was corrupted it's white ice so we had i found this spot with the gravel in it which some reason it was smooth but it was very steep see how much lower that plane is than this plane and i only had three ice screws and these guys hadn't been there before so i landed and put one ice screw in for me and then walked to the next spot and then he taxied up with power and we ice screwed him in es un lugar muy empinado, el hielo estaba muy complicado para aterrizar y él encontró este lugar que tiene grava, eh, como ripio, y, pero solo tenía dos eh, clavos, dos estacas para poner los aviones. Entonces aterrizó y el segundo avión llegó hacia él con potencia y lo pudieron eh, poner en el piso. Ta tiene mucha pendiente, esto no sé si lo que dice Bob, si se dan cuenta la diferencia de altura que hay entre el primero y el último avión. Yeah. That's my daughter. And then, you probably can't, yeah, there's rocks behind the wheels too. Hay oh. rocas para frenar la rueda de atrás. Ahí está el clavo cuando lo ataron. So we got the plane turned around, and we got it started. And I didn't have, at that time, for 11 years, I don't know how to say 11 years. In 11 years, I didn't have a starter. I just pulled it by hand. Por 11 años no tuvieron motor de arranque. Lo, lo arrancan a, a pala al avión. So we got it turned around downhill. And then I started it, and I got in, and then my daughter, and I'm holding the brakes, and I also have rocks again in front. And my daughter got this ice screw out, and then came and got in. And Como tenía pendiente, tu tuvo que primero girar el avión, prenderlo a pala, subirse al avión, mantener los frenos. La hija lo soltó, se tuvo que subir, y recién ahí pudieron salir. Como tiene tanta pendiente, se le iba para abajo el avión. Tenía rocas en las ruedas. And then it's, whew, you're gone. Um, that's an airstrip I have at a place by the ocean in a little tiny house. ¿Eh? A ahora al, al final le, le hacemos todas las preguntas. Vamos a dejar todas las preguntas para el final, para hacerme acordar que se la pregunto. So this lake, you'll see later. Bobby. Now that I have floats, um, I landed in this lake. Ahora que tiene floats, uh, para el, for the carbon cap. Sí. 
Ahora tiene floats para el Carbon Cup, que es el avión que tiene ahora, que es uno amarillo, ahora puede aterrizar en ese lago. Another glacier, more glaciers. My son proposed his wife on the glacier and I wasn't there. I took him there the day before and we found this place on ice and he took her there to propose the next day. And we said, you know, if she just said no, she'd had a long walk home. <laughs> Bueno, no entendieron todos, me parece eso. Fueron el día anterior, Bobby, que es el hijo, le pidió matrimonio a la esposa y el chiste es que si le decía que no iba a tener que caminar mucho tiempo para volver. <risa> More ice. More arches. Blueberries. So, I don't know if you had the same, but the blueberries, when they're ripe, the leaves are rojo. So, you can land there and start picking. Ahí pueden aterrizar y empezar a juntar blueberries, que acá no sé cómo se llamarían. ¿Acá también? Yeah, the same as here, they say. No sé. Ahora le preguntamos todo al final. Háganme acordar las preguntas. Eso es marzo cuando llega a la casa, la cantidad de nieve que hay. Los esquíes. So, This is what I'd like to do here, actually, and I'd like to meet as many of you pilots as I can um, to network because, well, I'll go ahead. Could you say that? Sí. A él, lo, a él lo que le gusta hacer es conocer pilotos como nosotros, generar relación, mandar en un container sus aviones y volar con nosotros, así como nosotros lo hizo en Islandia, lo hizo en un montón de lugares. Manda el avión, se guarda el avión. de estas maneras que nos está mostrando. I value the friendships and if y, we can fly two cubs in the mountains together that would be great. Y le gusta mucho la, generar esa relación de amistad y poder volar de dos cab, de a dos cabos de a dos aviones en la montaña. So this this trip is to Iceland. I from Iceland, Islandia. Iceland, I sent this airplane to Iceland. Mandó así el avión como vieron a Islandia. <coughs> Armaron el avión y salieron a volar por Islandia. And uh, this is my friend Arnar from Iceland, and I sent him the link. I sent the link on Facebook of, of the travel in um, streaming, and he says, "Oh yeah, be sure to represent Iceland." You know. <laughs> okay. So it's another beautiful place to fly, and very few people do any bush flying there. So uh, it's it's a good. Es un lugar muy lindo para volar y hay muy pocos que vuelan de esta forma en Islandia. So we flew together. Oh, um, oh, let's see. So can I play a video? Oh, yeah, check this out. Mira la lava saltando del... That was... Oh, I don't know what's... Vos conocés Seque de esto, ¿no? Seque sacrificó un par de drones filmando esto en Islandia también. Sé que put some drones inside of that and melt the drones. Yeah, I bet there's flight. a thousand. But you you <laughs> lost a drone? You lost a drone? Yeah, two. Two? Yeah, but you got some good film, right? You got some good film. <laughs> yeah. So this is just Iceland. You fly along and find stuff. So um, and we could land near, like land up here and check out this waterfall. Se puede aterrizar de este lado y ver. Miren qué foto. That's my friend Arner's plane. Um, this is a mount, famous mountain in Iceland, and it's close to a highway. And there's a bottle of whiskey under that rock up there. <laughs> and if you hike up to the top of the mountain, you can have some whiskey. But if it's empty, you have to come back with a full bottle. Okay, I, esta es una montaña muy famosa y alta que está en Islandia, que tiene en la cumbre una botella de whisky y que ustedes pueden subir y tomar de ese whisky, pero si se quedan sin tienen que volver a subir y reponer ese whisky que está ahí arriba. Wow. We slept close to this. Durmieron cerca del, del borde de este lado. Wow. That's my friend Arner. It's always windy in Iceland. Siempre es ventoso Islandia. But I hear it's windier here. 
pero escuchó que es más ventoso acá. <risa> See the glacier below? Ven el glaciar ahí abajo, todo eso es, es hielo. <coughs> so this is one of my favorite pictures because I love waterfalls and I was able to land right above it. Es una de sus fotos favoritas porque les encantan las cascadas y pudo aterrizar justito arriba de una. And the camping is And this is a, the other favorite one because I landed right at the bottom of the. Of the Esta es otra de sus favoritas porque aterrizó en la parte de abajo de la cascada. No, this is the moss, and this is this uh, blooms only for like two weeks in August in the summer. Uh, so there. this came green just two weeks. Two weeks. Esto se pone verde solo dos semanas a, a, al año. En agosto, you said in, in August. They became green, green. In August, yeah. En agosto se pone solo dos semanas verde. So it would be January here. Maybe. Sería claro Or en, en enero acá. Every town in Iceland has a swimming pool with geothermal heat and outdoor pool all year round, and it's the social gathering place for the town. Um, I don't fly at night, but no vuela de noche, pero dark. eso valía la pena. <laughs> wow. So, so this was a pretty cool spot, and this is dusk, and we took a big hike, but the plains ah. are right there. Hicieron una gran caminata desde donde están los aviones hasta donde sacaron la foto. So, when I come to Argentina, I want to go look for these places with you guys here. <laughs> Él dice que estando acá en Argentina quiere ir a conocer este tipo de lugares con nosotros. Acá. Todavía no lo llevé a ningún, volé a ningún lado, pero lo vamos a llevar a que vea todo lo que tenemos. You have an axe in your plane? An axe? Yeah. Because your trees, you mean? In the no, way? Of... I don't know. Marcelo, ask if an you have axe? an axe. Depends on the day. I take what I need each day. I mean, maybe lleva lo que necesita cada día. And never anything extra, because it it weighs something. Um, So, so now I'm in, whoop, now that's Florida, so that Eso same Florida. airplane is on floats, this is my son. Ese es Bobby, ese es el mismo avión con flotadores. Back to Alaska, my daughter skiing. Oh, so this is pretty fun. So see the plane here below the mountain? It just looks really plain, right? Okay, so that's the same, the plane's <laughs> in the same place. I'm just moved around to take the shot. En la, foto, en la primera foto parecía que el, el lugar era muy plano, pero se veía en la segunda como había mucha pendiente hacia atrás. Okay, and so that is the spot. Ese es el lugar de las otras fotos. Whoop. Wow. That's the spot. So it took three days to get this picture. Se tardó tres días en sacar esa foto. Why? Because the first day I just laid tracks through it. I came back and I landed. Ah, okay. El primer día I fue hizo huella y fui. I, I landed and I stopped and everything, but I did. I don't think I got out. I just scoped it all out and I got out. The second day I went back and I took a ski. I, I skied around there. Okay. But I forgot the drone. <laughs> el segundo <laughs> día lo dejó el avión, caminó, pero se olvidó el drone para sacar la foto. Y so, el tercer día... So I had to go back the third day, right? El tercer día volvió al lugar y ya con el drone sacó esa foto. And this is more, more ski flying. Esto es, son vuelos para esquiar que, que hacen. So these are some places that I don't think anybody's landed in here now, where these pictures I'm showing you. Um, and I have a friend or two that I take with me, and I usually land first, and then they'll land behind me. Um, but um, I don't think anybody's landed this particular... Él cree um, que nadie está aterrizando en este lugar. Por lo general lleva a dos amigos. Él aterriza siempre primero, pero cree que es un lugar que no está aterrizando nadie en este momento. 
There's nothing level. You can no hay nada plano, todo tiene pendiente. And Ahí se nota. I don't use a tail ski because I need to have a break. I remember our conversation in Alaska about that. Dice que no usa eh, esquí en la cola porque usa la rueda como ancla para frenarlo. This is my break. And then my daughter, if she's in the back, the first job she does when she gets out is to go back and step on the handle and push the tail in the snow. Cuando va con la hija, lo primero que hace es bajarse del avión y empujar la cola hacia la nieve para que quede clavado, para que no se no avance. And we cover the skis with snow so the sun doesn't melt. We heat the ski, make water, and then that would freeze and hold the hold it down. Apenas aterrizan cubren también con nieve los esquíes para que el sol no derrita la nieve y no haga hielo que después de alguna manera se congela y no lo puedan mover. So this is a place, our tracks are out here. You can see the tracks, but that's sort of one of the Yes, close places to the to skis. Ese es el lugar, ahí veían las, cerca de, lo, de los esquíes las marcas del avión. Sí, las marcas del aterrizaje. There's the skis. Ahí están los esquíes. It's, it's time to get bush wheels. Yeah. It's time to get bush wheels. So <laughs> I took my I took this plane to Alaska and I flew from Florida to Alaska two times. But that's the Mississippi River. So and it goes like 20 knots. So you have to think about that with the wind because the current. So ese avión lo, lo voló del de Alaska a Florida un par de veces y este es el río Mississippi and 20 knots Uh, 12 to 20. 12 to 20. Yeah. Entre 12 y 20 nudos de viento en uno de estos aviones se nota un montón. Para todos los que volamos lento es un montonazo. And when I saw the barge, I had to land there, so I landed there. Cuando vio la barcaza tuvo que aterrizar ahí. Um, Canada. This is Misty Fjords. If you're familiar with um, Southeast Alaska by Juneau, this is from that area. And Esto es Alaska really, al sur. Only way to get around that country is on floats. La única forma de andar por ahí es con flotadores. I couldn't land this lake because the clouds. I really wanted to, but you can see there's no way you can go in there. And no pudo aterrizar ahí por las nubes y se veía que no había forma de, de entrar. Oh, this is one of the cabins you can rent there. Esas cabañas se pueden alquilar en ese lugar. But you only can be there with floats. Right. Solo se puede llegar con un avión con, flo con flotadores. No hay otra forma de llegar. <laughs> they say they don't have so many clients. You, sh you, you need a, a government float cabin plane. and only like three people use it a year. Solo tres personas usan en esta cabaña en un año. Um, this is with friends in Alaska on floats. This is my dog. Ese es su perro. <laughs> this is my house at the water. Oh, and I have some pictures. I landed on this mountain. It's 10,000. Aterrizó en esa montaña, es, tiene 10,000 pies. It's a volcano. Es un volcán. Um, more floats. More floats. I really like floats. It's so easy. Floats are just easy. I mean, you don't have to watch out. Well, you got to watch out for rocks, but if it's deep. There's no holes in the there's water. No, yeah, I mean. <laughs> el, yeah. el agua es muy fácil. No tenés que preocuparte por rocas o pozos. Es, es fácil. This is mi casa. Esa es su casa, con su pista, el hangar y la casa allá atrás. ¿Dónde es eso? ¿En qué, dónde es? Eh, en, qué, in, in, in what part of Alaska is, your, is this house? On the Kenai Peninsula, about 50 miles south of Anchorage. 50 millas al sur de Anchorage. ¿Al sur de Anchorage? Mm. So, es, es el península de Kenai, eso. Hmm? El otro, el monte ese es el que está justo frente. The mountain uh, you land uh, that has 10,000 feet is yeah, in front of that part. Um, that's at my cabin, but that's on the west side of the inlet. So that's, um, that's, that's more southwest of Anchorage. That's Mount Spur. Suroeste de Anchorage. So this is a, this is a, and I'll show you a picture of that mountain again. Um, this was kind of funny. I had no gun, so you don't have bears, right? You got pumas? But yes, no that bears. is different. Okay, so. Ahí no tenía arma, y allá hay osos, y los osos son peligrosos en Alaska. I've never had to shoot a bear. 
but I like the confidence of carrying a gun. Nunca tuvo que dispararle un oso, pero le gusta tener la confianza de tener un arma. But to pass quickly through Canada, you can't do that with a gun. Pasar so, a Canadá no puedes pasar con armas. So I landed here to camp on this island. <laughs> and there was only room for the tent and the plane and a bush. Para evitar el riesgo de los osos. <laughs> Well, but you but can I hear, hear him. I could at least wake up, maybe, you know. Aterrizar yeah, para que los osos well, no but... se le acerquen. Y Anastasia le dice, pero los osos pueden nadar. Sí, pueden nadar, she's, pero no los puede escuchar. She's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's that lake. The little island is there. This, this is Canada? Uh, it's actually, I think it's actually the U.S., but okay. it's about to enter Canada. Okay. Um, what's this one here? Oh, I can go past it. The lakes are in terraces there. Los lagos están a diferentes alturas, ahí se veía en la foto. So this is that other lake that was weathered in the last time I went through, but now a few months later it's open. Okay, and este era el lugar de, de, que antes no había podido ater, eh, aterrizar y ahora estaba abierto. There it is. So now I can land it. And I'm still, I'm Um, 2,500 feet above the lake now. I mean, it's really in a hole. Está so, en un agujero, eso está en un pozo en la montaña. You can see the climb out is through the, through there. Super narrow. Yeah, so, okay, so there it is again. That's from very high. Ahí se ve desde muy alto. So this is some more in Iceland. I went back another time. This is Iceland. Camping in Iceland. I'm going to go quickly through these. The rock does crazy things there. Wow. 33. 33 cascadas. <laughs> ay, ay. Oh. 33. Wow. More of the moss. More blueberries. Oh, so when I leave in this fall, I always have the skis ready to put on the plane. So I have them organized and ready to go. Cuando se va en otoño, deja siempre los esquíes listos para poner en el avión, como se veía en la foto. This is Florida. Um, there's, oh. That's, Ese es un gravel chiquito. <laughs> there's no wind. Shirt. There was no wind. No wind. No, that's Bobby. That was my son. Um, Ese es el hijo no y no había viento. Y es difícil salir de ahí sin viento. And he didn't taxi back. He, he, didn't, he did not have to taxi back. He did not need to taxi back. No. O sea, aterrizó y no tuvo que taxiar de nuevo hasta la punta de la isla. Desde ahí volvió a despegar. O sea que la mitad de eso que estamos viendo usó para despegar. Oh, this is Florida. Eso es Florida. Yeah, this is kind of cool. Is it? How much that cab weight? The one uh, in that picture. The you honest remember? weight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like 1,065 on um, 31s. 1,065. 1,065 pounds. Yeah. And kilos? Divide by 2.2, right, yeah. ¿En cuánto es? So, Nadie hace matemática rápida, simplemente. Lo, lo, ok. 50 kilos less than my plane. No. Yeah. Well, we're going to go out there tonight and take some stuff out <laughs> yes, before we tomorrow. Need, <laughs> we need to take you some stuff out. still got the starter on it? Yeah. I can start it for you. <laughs> okay. It's a gift from my friend Tinti, my new starter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. it's lighter than the old one. Um, anyway, so this is more ski fun. Oh, this is kind of a cool spot. You can see the tracks in there. See the tracks in there? This is another Ahí se ven la, las marcas de, del aterrizaje. This is another spot I don't think anybody's landed before. Creen que and, nunca nadie aterrizó ahí antes. And, oh, and that's, that's inside that spot. Ahí está adentro de esas marcas que se veían antes. Inside there. That's in the back of it. That's up in the back part. But it's it's 100% focus all the time. 
I don't fly instruments. I don't fly at night. I don't have the practice for instruments and all that. But, no vuelo instrumentos, no vuelo de noche, es todo el tiempo prestando but, atención a, a, but, afuera. But, but this I pay attention to. And then I relax. This is at my house, my casa. Um, so, oh, so this is the summit of that mountain. That's the steam from the volcano. Ese es un volcán y ahí está uh, saliendo Spur, el vapor. The one that is close to there. And it was really cold. It was like a 10,500 feet and Hacía mucho frío, estaba a 10,500, 10,500 a 10,500 pies de altura y hacía frío. And uh, this is uh, flying over it. That's the steam. Ahí está volando por arriba de la, del vapor que se veía en la otra foto. Northern Lights. So this is another real high spot. You can see the tracks in there. Ahí se ve, es otro spot donde ya aterrizó y se ven las huellas. And um, yeah, so I think I think I want to oh I think I want to jump ahead and um, yeah, I think I showed a plenty of these. I think I want to jump ahead and show that video. Okay. Yeah. Nos va a mostrar un video ahora. Yeah. Oh, I have one. This is like a favorite. Hello. This is a favorite. Este es su video favorito. Oh, does it take time to... There. This is... Oh. <coughs> That's, this is a favorite spot right here that I go in the summer. Este es un, un, that, un spot favorito que él tiene, que va en el verano. It's a really pretty lake. It doesn't melt out. This picture was taken July 21, and you can see there's still ice. El 21 de julio se sacó esa foto y todavía se ve que tiene, que tiene hielo el lago. Um, I really enjoy it. Eso es verano, pleno verano para ellos allá. There's a handful of lakes here that I really enjoy uh, to go to every oh, summer. And um, it's, it's, it doesn't matter if it's windy because they're in these holes. So, The wind is always over the top and it's very No importa protective. si hay viento porque en esos lugares el viento pasa por arriba, son agujeros, son como, no sé, esperanza, ponele. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I think I want to, um, I think I want to stop the <coughs> photos right now and jump to this video that I have of, um, when about the stole stuff that I did with my son. Ahora nos va a mostrar un, un video en el que él y su hijo eh, hablan un poco de la competencia de Stoll. And, uh, it should start. <coughs> Is it playing? Yep. It should go. Um, we can watch it di directly from YouTube too. From YouTube? If, yes, if the audio... So it's on Vimeo? <coughs> I can Gene. find it by the, the title. Oh yeah, because it doesn't have volume right now. So it's... um. It's um, on Vimeo, Bob and Bobby Breeden, Valdez. Vimeo. Vimeo, okay. Bob and Bobby Breeden, Valdez, not that one. I'll just stop it. It's um, by Eric. Eric. My Eric. Ah, uh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Picks up. Are you able to pair your phone to it? Yeah, I can use the computer too. It's going to be easier, I believe. Yeah. No audio, right? No. So we, I can turn we this can off. We can fix it. Mm. Yeah, because the internet heat, uh, in this TV is going to be... Okay, I have YouTube. No, but this 
and Vimeo. Oh, okay. You can send the link. Well, I will bring the computer and lo enchufamos con el HDMI. Okay. Un segundo que tenemos problemas técnicos. <laughs> Ten, eh, tenemos el HDMI. I can pause that for now. And then, while they're doing that, if anybody has a question in English, I'll answer it. Oh, I wore. I, I always was wanting to wear helmets because you go like a new Lexus. It's got airbags everywhere, right? And I wear a helmet bicycling. I didn't used to, but. And, but you know the V-brace and all that? There's, in Super Cubs in Alaska, there were like 35 fatal accidents, and they said that 25 And it's my headset now, I don't even think about it. I was trying out with um, different types of helmets, and then a friend of mine figured out how to get a Bose into those kind of helmets. Yeah. All in your family are pilots? <laughs> uh, my son, I, d I stopped, my son, um, you'll see some about my son here, and he's, I never thought he'd fly commercially, but now he flies for Delta. He actually flew me, um, I was going to show that picture, but he actually flew me from Orlando to Atlanta this, on the flight that I took to come to South America. So... How long is the runway to have your house? It's now 1,240 feet. It used to be about 720 feet or something like that. So, well, yeah, I just made it longer so I could use it both ways because it was one way. Yeah, we got audio. Yeah. Are you allowed to land wherever you want in the United States? I mean the world. In, so in Alaska, yes. In the lower 48, no. Um, we are ready? Uh, hold it one second. Yeah, sorry. Um, in the lower 48, no. But when, only in 1980, which to you is a long time ago, but only in 1980 did they make the um, national parks in Alaska, and they were already flying Super Cubs in there. So they said, fixed wing use can continue. So I'm landing places you can't land a helicopter. Because it's always a decision to land. Yeah. So if you're looking for a place, you find it and you go to land. You can't make a flight to land. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, no. No. Like no. Oh. So, all right, let's do it. Yeah, like let's do it. My first trip flying on <laughs> was when I... On a Cessna 170 and flew it up here in uh, 1987. I always loved outdoors, so I was one to come up here and wait a bit for fun. One thing that really gets me stoked about this flying is how much, how cool it's been to do it with my son. I had no idea when he was coming up how much we enjoy what we do together. Because, you know, I started out taking him on camping trips, maybe uh, in America West, you know, 48 West, or or up here, we'll take these five, six day trips and we will go explore places and, just, and, and fly up valleys and land and camp. We'll wait out a weather system and we'll go some more in the wind and we'll work it. And it's just built up every year. His capability increased every summer season. We went to look forward to that summer trip. I certainly like to fly around with my dad. You know, he's taught me most of what I know about flying. I've brought him to a certain point at the basics and he's, he's brought me further along because of his youth and his energy and his capability. Of course, the Valdi stuff is sort of a branch of that. The Valdi competition is um, just a great time. It's a good time of year. It's early season. And so a lot of people camp out with their airplane. It's a very nice social time and uh, a good friendly atmosphere. Definitely a family atmosphere. The competition at Valdi's is a short takeoff and landing competition. Bush pilots come out for the second weekend in May and have a little competition to see who is proficient at flying their own aircraft. It's a lot of very 
very capable guys that are fly for a living and a lot of their personal efforts have gone to learning to find their way to fly their airplanes as best they can. The pilot will pull up to a chop line on the runway. They'll give them a thumbs up and the pilot then takes off in as short of a distance as possible. The distance is marked by the judges. The pilot flies around the pattern and lands, but they have to land on or after the line. If you add up his takeoff distance, and the distance from that line to where he stops, two tries, and that is uh, a very really simple test, but yet a very telling one because it really shows how well the pilot does his work. Bobby and I have been flying all these for four years. I've kind of coached, and he's kind of practiced. And he has got first place each time. He was always there coaching me, telling me whenever we go out and practice, how far I touched down from the line, you know, what my approach looked like, what the wind speed was like, what my takeoff and landing distances were like, you know, critiquing me, helping me get better. He would practice to the point where he's getting that dialed in where it's consecutive one after the other, after the other, after the other, and the wind changes, and he still incorporates all that and he still hits that spot. This year, we both competed uh, finally at Valdez. I had a total distance of 116 feet. That looks good. That's really good. Like 90% of the time, I'm the one doing the practice. Yeah, he hits the line and does everything, but it's, it's not always as short or as accurate. And then he comes in the competition and does absolutely phenomenal, scoring only three feet longer than what I did. And I'm sitting there watching him fly, and like my heart's dropping, like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen right now? If he wins, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Bobby's back in first. I flew this year. I got second. Between the two of us, we've been able to uh, really, really uh, have a lot of fun with it. It's all about having fun. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for taking time on this hot afternoon to sit and. Gracias por escucharnos esta tarde. Thank you, Bob, for this presentation. It's awesome to see what you've done in aviation and to share with us. So oh, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I appreciate it. I would say the last thing is I, I am very serious about um, bringing an airplane down here to fly, and I would like to network with you guys. And I respect what you guys have accomplished because you guys have flown here. I mean, I've heard stories today, you know, the stories you guys were telling me about flying your, buying it in Texas and flying it to Alaska and then flying it down here. And, you know, you flew down to Ush, Ush, Ushuaia, um, this month and back and did a 20 day trip, stressed it out with your wife and everybody was comfortable the whole time so you knew the weather. So you guys have a lot of knowledge I don't have that I have respect for and would like to understand. So. Bueno, no, que quiere seriamente traer un avión para acá y volar con nosotros acá y a, eh, aprecia mucho el conocimiento que nosotros tenemos del lugar y si lo podemos compartir con él va a estar muy contento de, de volar con nosotros acá. Yep. Okay, so. Así va a ser. Yep. <laughs> Gracias, Bob. Thanks. Good. Gracias. <laughs>